Hello everybody, this is City Scrapper. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. Today I have a layout that I made using the My Creative Scrapbook June Limited Edition Kit. And this is the third layout that I've made so far. For this layout, I'm doing something that is much different for me. The kit came with some beautiful stamps. These are Bow Bunny stamps called Rose Garden stamps. And I wanted to feature the stamps on my layout. I wanted to use a lot of the images. So I decided that I was going to try to create a watercolor background. The paper that I'm using for this layout is a little bit different than the paper I normally use. This is 140 pound cold press watercolor paper and it's 12 by 12 and that's why I purchased it. I saw it on sale and I thought maybe at one point I would make a layout like this and I'm really glad that I purchased it. It is a little bumpy on the surface because it's cold pressed and I was a little worried that the images wouldn't come out crisp and clear but the stamping came out just fine and in order to stamp the images I'm using some stays on ink in jet black with a well used acrylic block and I use most of the images that are in the stamp set there is a large rose there's a smaller rose there's a rose bud and then there are clusters of leaves. One has six leaves, one has three leaves, and then there are some single leaves as well. And I use all of those. And in addition to the flower stamps, I'm using a stamp from my stash. It's a little mesh stamp, and I just put some of it down in areas where I did not have the flowers. Now, I'm sorry that the beginning of this process didn't record, but what I'm doing is I'm adding some watercolor sprays to the background. I'm just spraying them on my work surface and then I'm using a inexpensive watercolor brush and I'm just adding the color to the background. And I just want to say that I am definitely not a watercolor expert. I have played around with them in the past but I don't have a ton of experience with them so somebody who is an expert at watercolors might have approached this very differently but in the end I was pretty happy with the result so I thought I would show you how I went about doing this and it really was not hard to do. It just took a little bit of time. And I don't include the entire process of me painting, even with it being on fast forward, it would take just way too long for me to show you the entire process. But I think that the footage that I show you gives you the idea of how to make a watercolor background. In order to paint the flowers, I use some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mists. I use Red Rain Boots and Pink Sunshine. Those are two different colors of pink. I use more of the darker color in the center because flowers look darker in the center and then they look lighter as they go out toward the outer petals. I also try to leave some white areas. And the areas that are not painted just add a little bit of depth to the flowers as well. Now I'm working on the leaves. For the leaves, I use art anthology sprays. I used Granny Smith and Siesta Key. Those are the two I'm using here. One is a blue color, one is more of a green color. I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying to make them a little bit darker in the center. And you could see here that I'm really just roughly painting them. I'm trying not to go outside the line, but I'm not worrying too much about it. And I'm also not worried that I cover every little bit of each leaf. You can see there that I added a few splatters of both the green and the blue. When I'm adding the splatters, of course they go everywhere, but I do try to concentrate the splatters along the edge of the background color. So where the blue meets the white background, I like to have a lot of splatters there. I feel like it kind of helps to soften the blue edge. Now I'm painting those rosebuds. Not sure why the rosebuds would be yellow when the other roses are pink, but I just wanted to add some yellow in there. So I added in some warm ochre and timeless yellow, and those are also art anthology sprays. Now I'm going back in with the red rain boots, which is a darker pink color, and I'm adding it again mostly to the center, but you could see that I put some oh, throughout the flowers. I do want to maintain that darker center but I also want to build up some of the color. And I'm also trying to make the petals look a little bit more three-dimensional by putting some of the darker color on what looks like the underneath part of the petal. When watercolors dry, they look lighter than when the color is wet. So I'm just trying to make sure that the color is vivid enough. 
I had thought that I wanted to have a section up on the right and a section down on the bottom, like there would be two separate sections, but I really made the flowers too close together. So I am eventually gonna join the two sections, but that was my thought right now. That's why there's that line going diagonally through the flowers. I'm also adding a little bit more stamping on the background. I'm using a really old stamp that I have in my stash. It's a little script stamp. And so I just added a little bit of extra stamping in a few places in the background between and around the flowers. I thought that the background looked a little flat. So I was thinking that if I added another color mixed in there, it might make it look a little more lively. So I'm using some yellow, the yellow that I used earlier, and that is timeless yellow. And I'm just mixing that in with that turquoisey color that's on the background. And then I'm adding some of the yellow splatters in the same places that I added the blue splatters. I just think that it adds a little something. You can't really see the yellow splatters too much, however. So I continue adding some more of the yellow to the background. And I do like the way that that makes the background look a little bit brighter. And then I finally accepted the fact that those two areas had to be joined together. If I had wanted to have two separate areas, I should have made it much more clear. I had a much larger white space in between, but that's okay. I'm gonna try that again next time. And I really liked the way that stamping looked on the background, so I went back in another time with that same little mesh stamp, and I'm adding some light stamping behind the flowers. I don't want it to be too dark, but I do like the effect that that gives. Then I was thinking I wanted to add a little bit of something else to the background. A little bit of white would be nice to brighten it up a little bit. So I took the stencil that we got in this month's kit. I got some modeling paste and I used the Crafters Workshop brand and I mix it together with a little bit of white acrylic paint just to make sure that the white is as white as I can get it. And I'm just adding little bits to the background. There are no large areas. I'm just going in and adding some not over the flowers, just in little spots on the background where I think it'll fit and where I think it would be nice to have a little bit of white. And I just like the way that the stencil looked on the background. I thought this was the perfect pattern. It fit right into those little spots. And I just thought that it was a good match for the size of the roses. And now I'm going in with some watered down white acrylic paint. And I love to add white splatters to my backgrounds and also some black splatters as well. I love the way it just adds a little bit of like randomness and messiness to the background. So I just put a lot of white splatters and then a couple of black splatters. And now finally, this is going to complete the background. So now I'm moving on to the rest of the layout. This is my photo. I will turn it around in a moment, but I just backed it on some black cardstock and I'm popping it up on some foam and I put some ATG adhesive and I'm attaching it down. And this is a photo of my younger daughter, Julia. She was dressed in a really pretty prom dress and I just thought she looked so pretty in this picture. She wasn't going to her own prom. She was going to a friend's prom, but I took lots and lots of photos. So I'm trying to pick out the best ones. I use another one on another layout for this month and I'm trying not to go absolutely crazy scrapbooking every last picture. But I can never really promise myself that I won't go overboard scrapbooking any particular event, especially event an event where the photos came out really nice. I've selected some pieces of chipboard, some die cuts, and I also have some of the dimensional Prima flowers, and I'm kind of playing around with them on the layout. And I just added some pink roses. Those were fussy cut from some of the papers in the collection. And I'm just layering those flowers in with the rest of the die cuts and chipboard pieces and flowers. And although I do continue to move the embellishments around a little bit, for this layout, I did decide fairly quickly on where I wanted to put the major elements. I layered a lot of the chipboard pieces and the die cuts on both sides of the photo. And then I have the flowers in the upper right-hand corner and the lower left-hand corner. And I had some of these little leaves that were on my desk left over from another layout. And I thought that they would just add a little something. So I added those in behind some of the flowers. And I also added three little circles. They're little buttons, but they don't end up on the final layout. 
And then I thought that it would be nice to ink the edges of all of these die cut pieces. So I took a dauber and some Distress Oxide in Victorian Velvet. And I went around the whole layout and I inked the edges of everything. And I think that inking the edges makes the die cuts and the other embellishments look a little bit more interesting. And then they also will stand out a little bit from the background. There's a little bit more contrast. Now I'm inking the edges of those fussy cut floral pieces. And I just love in the Prima collections how there are always opportunities to fussy cut out beautiful images and include them in your layouts. I like a lot of the images, but I definitely love the florals the best. And I love including those in with the other embellishments that are on the layout. Now I wanted to add a little bit of something to these dimensional flowers. They're very beautiful on their own, but something that I like to do is add a little bit of gel medium and then dip them in some diamond dust. If you're not familiar with diamond dust, it's a very, very sparkly glass glitter. And I used to spread the gel medium all over the entire flower. And now I'm just putting it on the very tips of the petals and then dipping the flowers in the diamond dust. And then it just stays on the petals, on the petals edges. And I was kind of thinking that it might look nice to also add a little bit on the center of the flower as well. And I might do that next time. I love the look of the diamond dust, but I think that it was a little bit like overkill to add diamond dust to the entire flower. Now I'm going to attach everything down with some of that heavy duty gel medium. One of the things that I added below the photo is a string of pearls and that was included in this month's kit. And I love adding pearls to my backgrounds. I never thought to add a string of pearls before. So I thought that was pretty cool. I also add a small strip of lace that was included in the kit and I cut it down to size. And you could see now that I'm just using my scissors to position it properly. And that heavy duty gel medium, it's excellent for holding down everything on the page. It can hold things down like the pearls that are a little bit more difficult to attach down and it could hold down a, a die cut as well. The centers of some of the flowers had gold beads on them. So I thought it would be nice to add a little touch of gold around the layout. There are already plenty of stamped leaves, but I thought that it would be nice to add some die cut leaves as well. I took a small leaf die that was in my stash and I cut out a number of leaf die cuts and I cut them out in white and then I heat embossed them. First, I heat embossed the entire thing in a coppery color and then I went back and I used my dauber and I just put the adhesive in a few areas on the leaves and then I added some gold embossing powder on top of that and then I heat embossed again. And I like the little bit of metallic that those leaves add to the background. But once I have those leaves in place, I was thinking that I wanted to double up on the lace. So I cut another piece of it and I'm layering that on top of the original piece, but I'm just offsetting it a little bit so that you could see the edges. There's like a little scalloped edge to the lace and that way you could see both of the edges. And I just wanted to make sure that I had enough of the gel medium on the right side. So I add a little bit more. I added a little fussy cut circle there that had a heart in the middle. And now I'm going around the layout with some Elmer's gel glue and I'm gluing those leaves down. And I only glue them down at the base. I put some glue at the base and that holds them down, but it still gives them the opportunity to lift up a little bit from the background and show a little bit of shadow and dimension. Then I started thinking about what I wanted the title to be for this layout. I suggested to my older daughter that I could call it Prom Night and she reminded me that there is a horror movie called Prom Night. So instead of calling it Prom Night, I decided to call it The Prom. I'm using gold thickers that were in a past My Creative Scrapbook kit. And because they were a very bright gold, I wanted to dull them down a little bit. So I'm adding some Deco Art Metallic Luster in rose gold. And I liked the way that that made them match the layout much better. So I thought that that was the perfect spot for them up on the upper left hand corner. And I'm just running my ATG gun over the backs of each of the letters and attaching them down. And then I'm adding some doves on top of the title. And then I'm adding some photo corners. I had heat embossed some photo corners. I used an EK Success photo corner punch and punched out two corners. And then when I was heat embossing the leaves, I heat embossed those as well. I glued those down with a little bit of glue and I added a very tiny self-adhesive pearl 
onto each of those two photo corners. Now I'm going to add some pearls to the background and I'm adding them in three different sizes. I'm just tucking them in in little spots where I think that they'll look good or where there's maybe a little gap. Sometimes a little area will just kind of speak to me and say something needs to go here. So I just tuck the pearls in in all those little spots. Once I have them arranged the way I want them, I go in with the gel glue and I glue each one of them down. And then after I put down the three sizes, I found I had a really, really small size as well. And so I added those into the mix. And I just really love adding things of all different sizes. I feel like that just makes them look far more interesting than if there's just one size of something spread around the page. Not that you can't have an element on your background that's the same size that repeats. It's just with certain embellishments like enamel dots and pearls, I really like to have them in multiple sizes. You could see that I'm using those small scissors quite a bit to help me to manipulate the pearls. Sometimes the fact that they're round makes them a little bit difficult to handle. And I find the smaller they are, the harder they are to get them where I want them. But anyway, the pearls are all attached down and the layout is now complete. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope that if you like this video, you'll give it a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. I hope you'll take a look in the description box. You'll find the link to the My Creative Scrapbook website. This is the limited edition kit and they have this and several other beautiful kits available each month. If you have any questions about anything in this video, please leave me a comment. I don't always get to the comments right away, but I do answer each and every comment. I hope everybody has a great day and I hope to see you again soon. Take care everybody, bye-bye.